How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fishkeeping. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a couple of reasons why your plants may be melting away or their leaves may be turning brown or they may just be dying off completely. So this video is going to be jam packed with a bunch of information. So definitely make sure to stick around and I hope this can help solve your problem with your plants. So we all know that an aquarium with lots of plants looks like absolutely beautiful, especially when they're all nice and lush and they're super healthy and all their leaves are nice and green or nice and pink but sometimes we all know that there can be problems with our plants and that's kind of what we're going to be covering in today's video so the first reason your aquarium plants may be turning brown is because they were originally immersely grown now what this means is that they weren't actually grown underwater and instead they were grown in a really humid and wet greenhouse so a lot of aquarium plants are actually grown like this especially from big box stores like petco or pet barn or stuff like that they generally have immersely grown plants it can be hard to determine what plant is immersely grown and what is submersed grown but pretty much any really brightly colored plant or anything with a really strange leaf shape is generally immersely grown so stuff like purple waffle or borneo sword are two really main immersely grown plants so for some plants it won't really affect them being immersely grown so for stuff like anubias which is actually in the peace lily family it won't actually really affect them too much but stuff with really thin and delicate leaves it will affect so although your plant may look like it's dying if it is grown immersely the immersed grown leaves will just have to die off before the plant can actually start putting out new submersed grown leaves and then it will start to take off from there so if you do see your plant starting to melt away around about one to two weeks after you got them definitely just leave them in there because most of the time they will sprout back and they'll grow nice and fast once they have gotten to that submersed grown stage all right so the next reason your plants may be dying is due to plant diseases so when we're talking about plants there's three main sections on most plants that will get diseases so for stem plants it's just leaves and roots but for plants like anubias and java fern they actually have leaves rhizomes and roots that will all get diseases so obviously i'm not going to go over all the diseases that your aquarium plants can get because we'd be here forever but the two main ones are Anubius rot and fern rot, so that will affect all Anubius and obviously all Java ferns. Now these diseases can kill off your plants completely, but most of the time it'll just affect a couple of the leaves and it'll just cause some discoloration and maybe even some to fall off. So yeah, as uncommon as it is, plant disease may be one of the reasons your plant leaves are turning brown and dying off. Alright, so the third reason you may be experiencing some failure with your plants is actually due to water conditions. Alright, so water conditions are most likely the reason your plants are dying and it can be quite hard to stay on top of, but there's just a couple of main ones that you really need to keep in mind if you want to successfully grow your plants. Alright, so the first water condition we'll start off with is the temperature. Okay, so most tropical aquarium plants do prefer a temperature of around 25.5 to 26 degrees Celsius. This is completely dependable on whatever plant you have or whatever plant you're planning to get, but you're going to have to do a little bit of research before you get that plant just to find out what the ideal growing conditions are. So a couple of popular aquarium plants that actually prefer cold water conditions are stuff like Java moss, Embulia, Bucephalandra, and even Marimo moss balls. And when we're talking about plants that like a higher temperature, stuff like a lot of Hygrophilia variants really love a high temperature, Anubias, and a lot of waterweed sort of things, so stuff like Elodia, all do well with really high temperatures. Now, obviously, we're not talking too high temperatures, we're just talking around 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. The next water condition that can be quite lethal to your aquarium plants if it's not controlled is pH. So once again, most common aquarium plants prefer a pH between 6.5 to 7.8. So once you start exceeding this, it can become quite dangerous for your plants. Now, anything greater than 9 can start converting the ammonium into the water into toxic ammonia, which can not only kill off your plants, but it can be quite harmful for your fish too. 
Okay, so the next and probably most common and obvious reason your plants are dying is due to carbon deficiency in your water. So carbon is really important to maintain in your water as it's an essential part of photosynthesis. So without it, your plants are just unable to grow and thrive. So fish actually do constantly produce carbon. And one thing you can do is cycle the lights on and off during the day to allow the CO2 from your fish and from bacteria within your tank to naturally increase in the water column. So if you notice any of your leaves dying off, I would definitely use this method. All right, so the next water condition that can affect your plants is actually nitrate deficiency. So nitrates are quite beneficial for plants and they're obviously a byproduct of the nitrogen cycle. So pretty much the nitrogen cycle is when the fish waste and excess food is broken down into ammonia and this ammonia is then converted into nitrites which is then converted into nitrates. So plants actually significantly benefit from there being nitrates in the water column and it pretty much just promotes healthy growth especially within the plant's leaves. So if there isn't actually any source of nitrogen in the water your plants will actually start to diminish in health and slowly die off. So luckily enough, there is actually a wide variety of chemicals in the market that can help gain more nitrogen in your water. So stuff like Flourish Nitrogen by Seachem and Nitrogen Plus by Dymax all provide a sufficient amount of nitrogen into your water that your plants can benefit from. So obviously there's more natural ways of doing it. So what you can actually do is leave your tank for a prolonged period without doing a water change. And this will obviously build up the nitrogen within the water and obviously your plants will benefit from this. Okay, so the last water condition that I'm going to cover that can actually affect your plants is a lack of nutrients within the water. So luckily enough, there is actually a lot of products on the market now that you can use as fertilizers for your aquarium plants that do provide your plants with the much needed nutrients. Now, if you do notice your plants starting to die off I would actually recommend getting a fertilizer anyway, especially if they're a new plant, just because sometimes they take a while to set into your aquarium and the nutrients is really beneficial for them. All right, so that's all the water condition sort of things that I'm gonna go over. I will pop up a chart right now that has all the water conditions that can affect a plant, but if I went over all them, we just wouldn't have enough time. So I'm just gonna skip most of them and I think I've covered the really main ones but let me know in the comments if I've missed any and if you want a video on them. So another factor that can actually affect your plant's growth and change the color of their leaves is the source of light that you're using. So plants actually aren't too fussy when it comes to light source, but they do definitely need one. Now, if you don't have a light source on your tank, that is definitely the reason your plants are dying off as it's an essential part of photosynthesis. So that and carbon is the two main factors for photosynthesis to occur and without them the plants cannot grow and thrive so as long as you have a decently bright light on your aquarium that's on for around six to eight hours every day you should find your plants grow amazingly so the last factor sort of goes hand in hand with the light source and this is if your plants are actually being smothered by algae so algae can be a huge problem in a planted aquarium or even just an aquarium where you're trying to grow a couple of plants. So not only can algae suck the nutrients out of the water, but it can also grow over the leaves of the plants, which blocks out the light and just smothers them, and they will just slowly start dying. So if you start noticing algae in the aquarium, the first thing you can do is dial down your lights. So most of the time, if you have your lights on for too long, you will start growing algae. So another thing you can do is go to your local grocery store and buy some hydrogen peroxide. Now, what you can actually do is you can take out your aquarium plants and you can spray them with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and hold them out of the water for five to 10 seconds. And then you're just gonna wanna rinse them off in a bucket of tank water and you can put them back in your tank. And you'll notice that the algae starts to die off and you can just keep doing that whenever you see algae starting to grow on your plants. Alrighty guys, so that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. If you haven't already, please make sure to go subscribe and also comment down below your thoughts on the video. But yeah, I'll see you guys in that next one.